Hey there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop. In this video, I'm painting up my Gorgon Armoured Transport. I've already done several videos on the build process, along with painting up the driver cabin, which you can see masked off in the yellow at the very back. To see how they've been painted, check out my previous videos. As the Gorgon isn't fully built, I'm doing this as a sub-assembly, just to make some parts much easier to paint, and then once everything is painted, I can finally glue everything together. Because it's a sub-assembly, I've got absolutely everything laid out in front of you now. So I've got the side tracks, the main Gorgon, the main ram, the two hull braces, the spotlights, barrels, the twin subber guns and the ladder, along with the different sponson options which are magnetised to go on the side sponsons. Before I prime, I'm going to do a light spray with my purity seal. That's just to help give a slightly better surface for the primer to stick to. And then once that's done, I'm going to go in with my airbrush and use my black primer. You can see that some parts of Gorgon have already been primed. I did that before I built the Gorgon, just so I could easily paint up the undersides and the recesses that will be harder to reach now the Gorgon is built. A lot of the smaller items are magnetised, but they'll be quite fiddly to paint and I don't really want to have to touch them with my hands. So what I've got is a small tin that I can then just place all the bits on and easily paint up. This will allow me to batch paint up all those weapon options without having to hold them. Before I put the primer on, there's some bits I masked up. So for example, I've masked up the tracks purely because I need to keep that bare resin so when I add in the track, the super glue will have a really good contact between the two resin pieces. I then primed the whole model black and then on the inside you can see a few areas that I've masked off. The parts that I've currently got masked off I've already painted using the internal colour scheme, the same colour scheme that I've done for the driver cabin. I've then gone and painted the floor using a mixture of lead belcher, iron breaker, and then some washes made from Agrax Earthshade, Xerus Purple, and Uriel Yellow. I've then gone and put on a gloss varnish, followed by the MIG scratch effect. This is very similar to the dozer blades that I did in my Storm Chimera video, which you can check out in a bit more detail in the top right hand corner. With the chipping effect dry, I can then paint the floor black and that's just to dull it down so the grey on top isn't a lighter grey colour from the rest of the grey which is going on the black. I can then go on and base the tank in my usual colour scheme of Eschen Grey, Scaven Blight Dinge, followed by Dawnstone. For the front ram, I really want to weather this as well, so I've done the same metallic effects and then I'm also on top of this going to paint it black followed by my grey colour scheme. And then I can start scratching off those top layers of paint to give me a really good weathered chipping effect on the prow. On the back I've done the same with the floor of the ramp but for the rest of the ram I've left that black because that's just going to be painted grey and not have any weathering effect applied to it. For the tracks these have also been primed and then using a bad on black I painted the sponsons and the track links themselves and that's because of the primer black is ever so slightly different from Abaddon Black, so it's good to get that colour down now because I'll be using that for touch-ups later on. I've then gone around and I've masked the edges of the tracks and masking out those sponsons so when I'm painting the grey base colours I don't have to worry about repainting the track links. Again on the back you can see that I've masked off this area before I've primed, that's so this will be bare resin and will give me a good contact point with the main part of the Gorgon when I glue them together. As you can see here, I've got the hull brace. If I flip it upside down, you can see some of that white internal colour. I've then carefully masked off the areas that are going to be hit with the spray brush next when I do the grey. I'll be angling the airbrush downwards, so some of these bits are going to be caught, so I don't want those bits to be painted. However, I don't have to worry about these undersides because as I'm angling downwards, they won't be hit by the airbrush. I'll go away and put on those base coats next, followed by removing the mask, and then you can see where we're at with the paint. Here we are with the Gorgon partially dry fitted, just so you can see what the overall construction looks like, minus the front ram and a couple of the extra details. I've finished with the gray base colors and I've removed the inner masking so you can see that interior white color. I've also then gone on and put the transfers around the Gorgon. There's only a handful. There's a few tank number markings on the side and one on the front in front of the driver cabin. Then there's the word Krieg and an Aquila and then there's the serial number at the very front. And then if I spin it around to the other side, you can see the exact same transfers. On the back, I've got the Gorgon's name, which is Hammer, which you can just see above the door. 
Looking at it up close, you can see that white interior colour and how that colour carries on on the underside of those hole braces. It was important to mask that off to get that effect. And again, just on these little brackets just here, you can see that you've got the grey and then the white underneath. That creates a nice detailed contrast between the two, rather than just being an arbitrary cutoff going all the way across. Those hole braces can carefully come out and you can see some of that interior detail slightly better. That white colour is still quite bright and will need weathering down with oils to give it the same look and feel as to the interior section such as the driver cabin. Those two sections are still sealed up by tape. I'm keeping them protected for the time being and slightly later on I think I'll take those off. Here is the front ram where you can see those chipping effects in place. You can see the exterior grey colour with some of that silver metallic colour showing beneath. And on the back you can see the exact same thing on the ramp. Because obviously the ramp is the bit that's going to be walked on, that's the bit that's going to be weathered the most. Which is why things like the interior of the ram, which won't have any impact from debris, is relatively clean in comparison. The next step was to do the weathering. There's a few steps to this process. The first one is airbrushing Rhinox hide along the rivets and seam lines, which you can just see around here. After that, I dry brushed Dawnstone along the whole model. That's just to pick up some of the edges and the rivets, making the rivets more gray than brown. And then lastly, I sponged on some Rhinox hide and Bad on Black mix, just to create an all over chipping effect. So you can see I've done the chipping effect all over using the same technique for the rear ramp. I also added on some hazard stripes just along this ramp here. I did this so there's some visual consistency between the front ramp and the rear ramp. So you'll see some hazard stripes at both ends. This one will be less visible during the game. So I wanted some hazard stripe visible while I'm playing. And with the ramp down, you can see the hazard stripes going all the way around that bracket. The next step is to do any detail colour, such as cabling, like the one here, which is why I've taken off that internal mask. You can also see the contrast between the two sections of white. The much brighter white hasn't had the oil wash done on it yet, which I'll get around to later on. And I will colour match it so they will look similar. And here is one of the side tracks that have all been weathered up as well. In terms of detail, there's some other areas such as the cabling here and the hydraulic section, as well as a couple of internal cables and control panels, such as the ones that you can see just up there. So they all need painting up. I'm back having painted up all the detail on the Gorgon. You can see that I've already done the hydraulics and the Aquila at the front. At the back, you can see the barrels along with the Aquila transfer and the ladder. The barrels are now glued in place and I've just used the same grey elsewhere but adding in the brown and the kind of bronze gold colour which is the same colour that I've used on the spent ammo casings which you can just see inside. That's also the same colour that I've done with the Aquila. To get those colours you use Rhinox Hide as a base. Then you layer on Hashnut Copper to a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Then just on the edges you add on Balfasar Gold and then it do a very light highlight at the very tips with lead belcher, which gives you a nice weathered effect just on the recesses. The hydraulics was a dry brush from a lead belcher mixed with a bad on black, so a very dark silver all the way up from lead belcher to minful silver, then washed lightly all over and then more in the recesses with Agrax Earthshade. The cabling is rhinoxide, then a 50-50 mix of rhinoxide and gopher brown, and then followed by gopher brown just for the highlights and then all washed back with Agrax Earthshade. It's a bit difficult to see, but just inside I've also painted up the lights. That's using the Feston Red as a base, followed by Evil Sun Scarlet as a highlight. I've also painted up the Heavy Stubber using the same gold technique as the Aquila, but using the silver just on the very tip of the bullet. I've also painted up the heat sinks on their Heavy Stubber's white. That's just to be consistent with the rest of my army, even though something like silver might be a bit more appropriate. However, it also just adds an extra layer of colour to my army, which is already quite dark. So having something that's slightly whiter just helps add a bit of colour. I've also painted up the sponsor weapons. This is the Heavy Flamer. This is a combination of the same brown for the cable just here. The barrel section is painted up in the same way as the hydraulics. The end was painted silver and then washed in several colours to create that heat distortion effect. I'll put a link in the top right hand corner now so you can see how that was done in more detail. I've also painted up the Heavy Stubber in the same way as I painted up the Twin Heavy Stubber. And lastly, there's the Heavy Bolter Sponson. 
the black is just a bad on black with a little bit of mineral silver as an edge highlight and to create some chipping effects. Then I've dry brushed lead belcher followed by mineral silver for all the metallic parts. And then lastly for the targeter at the top I painted it in the exact same way as the Aquila. For the track units I just had to paint up the side sponsons. These are done in the same way as the hydraulics. So starting with a the black, then dry brushing with a very dark silver up to a very light silver, then washing the recesses with Agrax Earthshade, which gives you that very dull metallic colour. So you can see on the edges it's really dark, and then as it comes towards the sponson where the weapon will be, it gets much lighter. Then I just had to tidy up the edge of the tracks with some Abaddon Black to get that all black, which will match the same black as the rest of the track, because I made sure to paint that Abaddon Black earlier, so it's not the primer colour. And then the last piece is the front ram, which again, I've got the cabling and then the hydraulic units, which are painted up in the exact same way that I've already mentioned. So we're slowly getting there and we're ready to apply an oil wash in the exact same way that I did the internal areas. So what I need to do first is put a gloss varnish down. What I've done is I've re-added the mask just here. That's because I don't want any gloss varnish going into that internal area that I've already painted up. I'll go away now and I'll add the gloss and the oil wash and then you should see the finished tank. I'm back having done the oil wash. You can also see that I've added in the two gunners at the very rear. I've also taken off all the tape, so the masking tape for the contact points such as on the track, as well as taking out the masking tape protecting the rear cabin. Let me just spin it around so you can see how it all looks. So here's the rear view showing you the gunners. Before attaching everything, the gun shield got glued to the gun, and then the gun is only attached to the Gorgon via the magnet in that central pivot. And then with that attached, I then dropped this guy in and then glued him to the gun just at that point. I've not actually glued him to the floor, so that's a relatively weak join. So if I do need to ever take him out, I could just break that off and get them out. Here's the other gunner up close. And then just looking through that cabin door, you can just see the driver as well. For the internal floor I did a slightly different mud effect to the one that I did from the cabin. Instead what I did was create a dry mud wash and then I applied that just to the recesses and the corners. To create the dry mud wash you need steel legion drab followed by Zandri dust. Then you need to thin it with a lot of Lamian median. That will turn it into a wash and then you just want to drop in a small amount of the Forge World weathering powders. I used the dry mud and the light earth, just a very small sprinkling, and then mixing that together creates a nice pin wash that you can put in all the recesses. If I show you the ram, you can see that dry mud effect just up along the ram section here, which I did in all the recesses, along with doing it along these two brackets along the bottom and on all the rivets along that bottom, just so you get that kind of caked on dry mud look. Then likewise with the front, you can see I've just done it here. Now, on the sides, you can see that I also did the oil wash here, focusing on these larger areas where you can sort of emphasize those streaks. I've also done a mud effect on the tracks. Now it's only the front part and the bottom that's really gonna be visible, along with this very corner section. This whole section along the top is actually going to be hidden within the Gorgon itself. To create the effects on the track, first of all, I did an oil wash all over, which is the same oil wash I put on the sides. Once that had dried, I'd then done the dry mud wash, which is the Zandri dust and still Legion drab, and I'd done that in all the recesses. And then once that had dried, I'd then applied a couple of weathering powders lightly all over, and then fixed the weathering powders down with some white spirit. That also helped get rid of some of the excess. Lastly, I took a graphene pencil. Using a knife, I scraped off some of the lead into a fine powder, and then using my finger, just applied some of that powder along the tracks. And now you can see you get a metallic shine on those raised areas. That completed the tracks. Again I didn't need to worry too much about this top section because only the very edges is going to be visible so it was mostly concentrating on the front, the rear and also the bottom. With that now all done it will be time to assemble the rest of the Gorgon and show you the finished product. And now here we have the completed Gorgon build with everything fully painted and assembled. 
One thing to say at this stage, I still haven't painted up the troops that go inside, and I don't think I'm going to get around to painting that anytime soon. But if and when I do get those painted, I'll be doing a separate video just on painting up those troops. So you can see here now that the prow and the lights are now glued on, as well as the sides. These inner brackets can still come out, as well as the weapons which are magnetised. Now if I just move it around, you can get a good look at absolutely everything. So now I'll just show you what it looks like with the different sponson weapons. Here we've got the heavy flamer loadout, which is probably my favourite of the sponson weapons, although it does make it quite a pricey model in terms of points, especially when it's just a transport. So we can take these off and add in the heavy bolters. And then the other option is with the heavy stubbers. All of these sponsons can pivot fully. So the front ram can drop down. And then this inner ram can also drop down as well, revealing the inside. And then when it comes to the ramp at the back. So if I rotate the back round to the right, you can see the hazard stripe on the right hand side that's been painted on that inner corridor. And then on the left hand side, you can just make out the red unit, which I painted up to look a bit like a fire extinguisher. And then you've also got the hazard stripes as well. And then on the ramp, you can just see that dust effect using that Zandri dust mix that I mentioned earlier. Looking at the gunners for a second, you can see the spent shells. Those were the ones that I'd scratch built with the light frames glued in place. I won't actually be able to remove the gunner or the gun. However, it would be possible if I did need to remove them, I could snap these off and then take these out. You'll notice that the radio antenna at the back are ever so slightly bent. That's just because when I pack it away in my storage case, the foam that goes on top of the model has slightly bent it over time. But because it's made of wire, I'm able to just straighten it up. And here you can see those gunners from the front. So just looking inside the model, you can see the hazard stripes on the left-hand side. On the inside, I've gone for a really heavily weathered look to give it a real war-torn appearance. So there you have it, that is the Gorgon build and paint series complete. It's been a very long project getting it built and even longer putting all the videos together to put up as a series on YouTube. So if you've stuck with it, thank you very much. I do really appreciate it. I tried to be as in-depth as possible with this build because I know it's currently quite a rare kit because Forge World still don't sell it. I hope you've enjoyed the series. As I mentioned earlier, if I do ever get around to painting up those internal troops, I will add that onto the series. I've got another series coming up after this on the Marauder Bomber, however I don't go into quite as much detail as this. If you're interested in other conversion projects, painting tutorials or building guides, make sure you subscribe and click the bell notification for future updates. That's all for this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, take care.